Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. I'm Nadia Giordana, and you are watching It's a Woman's World. Recently, my co-hosts and I had a discussion with regard to women in leadership. And as we covered some of the subject, we decided we wanted to bring in author and expert Julie Geske Peer to help round out some of the things that we touched on. One thing that I would like to differentiate, and that is that there's a difference between being a manager and being a leader. Ideally, a manager is a leader, but you certainly can be a manager and not be a leader. Mm -hmm. And you can be a leader and not be a manager. I, I think of all the work I do in my business with all of my consulting and my training and leading groups and being on social media, well, not social media, regular media, I guess. And I've been fortunate to travel internationally and meet with international groups. I am not a manager. I am in the role of a leader. Yet when I've been internal and I've been in the role of a leader, I've always also been a manager. And I think I've certainly worked for people as a man where they've been the manager and they were certainly not a leader. But you've got these informal leaders as well. And you just hope that the informal leaders are positive role models to others and they're not trying to sabotage what it is you're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. I think that distinction is an important one uh, between a manager and a leader. Yeah, yeah, I think that is a terrific point. Uh, who was about to speak? Me. I think also that um, you get a lot of success or you get more success than you would have if you have a passion for what uh, you are doing. Because yes. some people look strictly at how much money will it bring me? And then you go for that. Well, if you are really tenacious and you really adore that money, you may become a leader in that area. Uh, but I think having a passion for what you do really matters because that's how you can overcome the challenges that come your way. You can overcome the fact that there are some people who would uh, just put stumbling blocks in the way just because why is a woman trying to tell us what to do? <laughs> you know, there's all of that uh, going on. So if you have the passion, you will just uh, take a deep breath and keep facing it until you climb that hill. So I wanted to bring that out. Very important. Very important. Barbara? Yes, I, I thank you for bringing in inclusion and diversity. You know, I grew up in a small town in rural Minnesota, and the only person, non-white person that I knew then was our doctor, who was a really tall Chinese man. He was, he was great. And then when I went to college, there were all these people from different countries. I, I you know, had the experience of making friends with uh, black people, you know, from Africa and also from the United States. And that was so eye opening. And it has been a major part of my life uh, ever since. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a demand for diversity in my life. I remember when I was leading the uh, nonprofit on the east side of St. Paul, it was called the Living at Home Black Nurse Program. And we had uh, uh, the largest staff of any living at home program. We had uh, a Native American and German nurse. We had two um, healthcare workers from South America. One was from per um, Peru and one was from um, Argentina. We had uh, a, a Hmong um, a healthcare uh, worker. And then we had uh, a, a woman from Nebraska and me. <laughs> so <laughs> we were quite a group and we just, I mean, we transformed healthcare on the east side of St. Paul. It was so much fun and it wouldn't have been that kind of experience without that diversity. So I think that certainly in uh, this day and age in our world, 
not just our little state here, but in our world, because so much of it is international. We have got to be inclusive, accepting, and we have got to embrace diversity. Um, it's it's such a it's such a beautiful beautiful thing that we yeah. have. Uh, you know, if if we're a demand for it, it happens. Absolutely, and and these leaders sometimes you'll find that these leaders spring up and you're like melissa was saying if you have a passion they're they're in the organization they're in place they have a passion and they they spring up people automatically listen to them if they're charis dare i say charismatic enough <laughs> in a good way that uh, we have leaders like that, that uh, grow organically in our organizations, especially if, if we have a wide variety of, of people. Mm -hmm. I want to share something that I, um, I had a conversation with my daughter this past week, and she just got a really big raise. And she got the raise because she asked for it. She, um, uh, uh, well, I, I won't go into the details, but I, I have always said, ask for what you want, you might get it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what she did. And I think women need to ask for what they want because it's not going to be given to us on a platter. Uh, I think we all know that. We need to ask for and make demands that um, wh where we see wrongs that we, we know we can right. So ask for what you want. That's true. That's something I have never been able to do is ask for a raise. And I, it's, it's hard. Still on my bucket list. And it's probably never going to happen because I'm semi <laughs> retired now and, and doing different things, not working for a boss. But uh, yeah, that is an important point. I was so proud of her because it was a very significant raise. <laughs> very. Good for her. Yeah. You know, I sat in yesterday on a, um, oh, it was about an hour long webinar on critical thinking. And I do a webinar on critical thinking and I'm always trying to learn more. This guy is a national expert. He was very good. And one of the things he discussed was intellectual humility. Hmm. Um, and he said how important it is for us to, uh, he defined it and he said it's the ability to recognize what you know, but to recognize what you don't know and to not think, now I'm paraphrasing some of this, to not think you're sort of the end all be all mm -hmm. and that other people have other opinions that may be different than yours, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that they're wrong and how you need to be humble in listening to those differences with an open mind to determine, hmm, maybe, maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe I'm a little narrow in my approach and I need to be a little bit more open-minded. And mm -hmm. I think that's another important characteristic of a good leader, that you are not the only one that has the answers. In fact, mm -hmm. if we tie it into management, when I was hiring people, I always wanted to hire people that knew more than I did because mm -hmm. it was going to be better for the organization. I knew that I would learn and I knew that our department would look better if we had individuals that were very well versed on some of the issues that we, in fact, had to take a leadership role on within the organization. And I thought that was a good reminder. Absolutely. Melissa, were you about to say something? Um, no, I was just thinking of um, the whole fact of having to balance the way leadership is seen here and the way it is seen from our cultures, because it does create a lot of um, some, some obstacles when you start working, if you have to work with people from your own culture, our own culture. So I love know how I learned leadership out here, giving everybody a chance to speak, listening, and maybe taking, and of course, always being gentle and professional and calm with, the, with uh, your staff. But I've had um, 
people from my continent who don't see that as a good leader. Uh, she doesn't yell at anybody. She doesn't scream. No, perhaps she doesn't know what to do. So it, 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 you, you have that and then you, you have some start showing some disrespect, like, oh, she will not do anything, you know, but the great equalizer is if you tell them you keep on doing that, I will just have to fire you <laughs> very gently. <laughs> and then you actually go ahead and fire. That's when they know, oh, okay. So she had the, 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 the right to do that. But yeah, that has always been a very um, tough a thing to balance because of the different approaches. And, and these same people would work for an American boss or organization with no problem because they are thinking, okay, that's the American way of doing things. But when you are practicing, it's like, oh, she doesn't even hear. <laughs> no, you are not here. So we have that double standard going all the time and it just makes one more difficulty for um, leaders from our own uh, part of the world. It really I think does. Sometimes I think sometimes too. It's I hear what you're saying, and I found found that out when I was doing some consulting in some other countries. Mm -hmm. But I think here anyway, which I am much more aware of than other countries, it be also becomes a gender issue in leadership and in management, mm -hmm. and that women are not allowed some of the same management slash leadership styles mm -hmm. as our men. We're supposed to be the good girl. We're also <laughs> supposed to be kind and gentle and collaborative and cooperative and not supposed to particularly be aggressive, but to be um, assertive. Of course, sometimes if you're a woman and you're assertive, you're viewed as aggressive. But I think that we run into some gender uh, double standards with leadership and management as well. Definitely. Absolutely, we do. That is for sure. But I'll say my style is not gentle, Melissa. My style is, as I said, causing good trouble. And <laughs> uh, I am a direct communicator. That's why I'm able to ask for what I want. Because here's the thing, they're going to say yes, or they're going to say no. And I'm yes. not attached to the no. Because I can always um, ask other questions, or I can find other people. To, to be with or work with. So um, I think what, that's one of the things that I've learned over time. I certainly didn't come into uh, leadership knowing about the insignificance of a no. It's Barbara, you just, me. excuse me, didn't mean to interrupt. You just said another very pointed piece that I think is good for a leader. And that is to ask questions. Mm -hmm. because that's how you find out. I, I know even when I was working on my doctorate, one of the small little books they gave us was called The Power of Questions mm -hmm. and to be asking rather than telling. So I was glad to hear you say that. I think that's powerful. Thank you. Welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you, Nadia. I appreciate you having me in here to talk with you on It's a Woman's World. I love this topic of leadership. Absolutely. And the co-hosts and I were having a, an impromptu discussion just a day or two ago, and you've had a chance to look at that. And we decided that we, and we, and we were filming it at the time, we decided that this is really golden information for women in leadership. And we wanted to share it with our audience and round it out by bringing you in to talk a little bit more about some of the subjects that we touched on. Gosh, I really appreciate that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Maybe you can talk, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, then we'll just kind of go through it and get, get into the conversation. That sounds perfect. Thank you. So I am a an executive coach specializing in leadership launch and repair. So I can say more about that later if you wish, but that's kind of where I, I focus. I also am a consultant and trainer and helping uh, organizations and individuals to lift performance. I uh, love the topic of leadership. And so when you gave me the opportunity to 
hear that clip and uh, weigh in on some of those topics. I truly appreciate that. And I just love digging into leadership concepts. So thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some general uh, uh, things. I, I thought uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was, uh, uh, and I think Susan mentioned this one, was the difference between being a manager and being a leader. What have you got to say about that? I love that. And that was how everything started off, right? In your impromptu chat, which I just love. And it seemed to me, um, hopefully I'm reading this correctly. She was embedding, Susan was embedding a little bit of um, talking about the manager role with that reporting lines in mind, right? She said she's a consultant and she doesn't consider herself a manager at this point in time, but she definitely is a leader. And so to me, it sounded like she was embedding some of that. When I think of the managerial and leadership types of things, I also think about traditional ways of being a manager versus traditional ways of being a leader. And actually, it's my belief we need both oftentimes if we're in a formal reporting line kind of situation. Because some of those traditional managerial things like direct, so that was a traditional managerial thing, um, even things like budgeting, uh, being clear with strategy, accountability, which is always the hardest one for managers in general or leaders who have report people reporting to them i think that those skills are important because there are times for all of them do we want that to be all of the time probably not and then the traditionally leadership related things like soft skills and uh, communication and bringing people along and empowering those are also very important so i think that those elements are important to have a balance in if you are actually leading people in the reporting line kind of way. Now, both she, Susan, and you, Nadia, brought up the idea of uh, or get leaders organically arising from anywhere, right? I mean, you mentioned that, uh, how they can spring up anywhere. And she talked about how there can be leaders in the organizations that aren't formal leaders. And, and even as consultants um, going out to work with clients. I think those are all opportunities to show leadership, but even in, uh, in um, individual contributor roles, we have opportunities to show leadership or in our families, our communities, we have opportunities to show leadership. And so to me, I think of personal leadership and that we all have an opportunity and I would argue even an obligation to show leadership, personal leadership, wherever we have the opportunity to influence others. So I loved what she did to kind of start that whole chat and then how you brought in some of the elements about those organic leaders coming up from anywhere as well. Yeah, you know, and I, I just thought about uh, uh, nurturing leadership coming up. And I think, and I want to know what you have to think about that. Sometimes isn't there almost a, a reluctance and a fear of doing that uh, in a, a leadership role? Uh, does that, uh, is that really an issue or is that just something we see on television? <laughs> <laughs> Meaning a reluctance to teach people so that they can come behind us basically? Is that what and, you mean? And yeah, fear of them coming after your job, okay. that type of thing. Well, it's interesting because one of the things that I had noticed was something Melissa had brought up around passion and not just being a leader committed to earning dollars, right? Because if we're taking on leadership with the idea of this is our opportunity to make a bunch of money and we aren't really thinking about the role broader than that, I think that's an issue. And perhaps some of those that fear others coming might be in that thinking of their own thing more often than not. However, I think leadership should be really about helping our team members grow and evolve. And that is the betterment of the organization, right? And if we help our people shine, we therefore shine. So to be in a fear place is unfortunate, but I have seen leaders like that for sure. 
I also thought about, and uh, I don't, re well, I mentioned it in an earlier discussion with the group and they brought it up in this discussion, the value of diversity. I'd like to hear you expand on that subject. I heard a number of things embedded in everybody's comments around diversity. So we heard some things around uh, communication of different styles, race, different countries of origin, different cultures, um, even the, what was it, intellectual uh, curiosity or, or I can't recall the exact phrase, um, but all of those are signs of things that can be embedded in that idea of diversity. And as a leader, I think that we have a responsibility and, and that's any kind of leader and actually as a person, right? As a human being, the, the best that we can be is to be multifaceted. And when we are raised and grow into a certain population and um, place of existing, whatever our neighborhoods are, communities we hang out in, and the jobs we ultimately get, we learn certain styles. And there is a whole plethora of other styles and ways of being out there in the world, right? This is a huge world. There are many, many ways to be. And I think that it is our responsibility to expose ourselves to other ways. Because if we presume that our way is the only way, as you all were discussing, that is both limiting to our own growth, but limiting to the impact we can have on others around us. And it limits the our ability as leaders to recognize, celebrate, and utilize the various strengths of people around us. And so I think um, self-reflection is a big key as a leader in that area. The ability to self-reflect and figure out where we have opportunities to fill in gaps or learn new things. Uh, and then also to um, take in feedback when we get it, you know, as leaders, we often get 360 feedback types of things periodically or employee survey feedback periodically. Sometimes it's hard to hear. And yet if we can step back and let ourselves really take that in and figure out what we're doing to garner that feedback, we have opportunity to learn and grow. Absolutely. That was a, that really rounded that out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I also noted, oh, it was Barbara that was talking about, I think it was Barbara talking about gender issues, mm -hmm. uh, essentially uh, a, a leader, even a manager, both of those categories, when mm -hmm. a woman is uh, firm and assertive and how that sometimes plays out. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Certainly. I loved Barbara's story about her daughter asking for and garnering, getting, obtaining that significant raise, it sounded like. So that was fantastic. And I think it's really important. Uh, we aren't socialized by and large as women to be assertive uh, and to ask for what we need or want, right? In many cases, we are taught not to do that. <laughs> and so uh, it's something we have to to kind of practice and build as as we are in our adulthood oftentimes. I know I certainly had to do that in my, uh, I would say mid-career, I was really focused on learning how to do that because I wasn't taught that, I wasn't good at it initially. So I think it's an important thing to practice. It's really hard because it's something we don't feel comfortable doing. We feel like if we ask for something for ourselves that somehow other people's needs are more important but that's just simply not true. We are equally human and we have equal ability to have our own needs met, right? And we ought to be anyway. And so if, if leaders or anybody listening to this, just try to practice asking for little things first mm -hmm. by just flexing that muscle a little bit, uh, asking a partner for something, asking a child for something, asking somebody in your community organization, if it's a church or somewhere you may volunteer or whatever, and then start moving into the organization, asking for little things. 
it practices that muscle and you build those neural pathways where it becomes more comfortable. And then you could ask for those big things like raises if it isn't something you want to take on right away. <laughs> but I thought that story was fantastic. Absolutely, I did too. And I find myself, I'm guilty of judging other women. I, I, I notice it, I, at least I notice it now when I'm doing it. Uh, and I was actually watching a television show the other day. It didn't happen in real life, but this character that I really like, she's a very strong and powerful woman. Well, when she stepped up to the plate a couple of notches higher and became uh, really aggressive and, and uh, it was a, some things that you usually only see men do as far as taking over another business, I found myself thinking, I don't like her as much as I did before. <laughs> and then I realized, but if she were a man, would I be judging her in that same way? And I was, no, no, I wouldn't. But that's interesting. And that's great self-reflecting. You just did to go back to my earlier point about that self-reflecting. We can be harsh on other women as women. I think that we can be harsh on ways people show up in leadership, on the way people show up physically, uh, the way they communicate. I mean, there's so many ways we can be harsh. And I think that for me, sometimes when I find myself in that space, because I certainly do, I understand feeling that and noticing that yourself in yourself. For me, I'm often finding it when I'm feeling less secure about something. So if I see somebody being very assertive as a woman, and I find myself uncomfortable with it, if I sit and reflect, there might be something going on in my life where I'm feeling less certain and I'm not feeling that ability. There are times when I feel like I can be assertive and there are times when I feel like I'm less able to be assertive. And, and sometimes that comes into play, but it's also the way we've practiced it and been socialized from very, very young. And so those habits come out, right? So it, it, it's just a challenge. And I think it's great to recognize that we have opportunity as individual women to make sure we're not perpetuating that paradigm, if you will. Absolutely. And her time is up already. Oh my goodness, it goes quickly. <laughs> it went a little bit too fast because I think you and I have more that we could say. Yes, but I love the topic, so I understand. Fantastic topic. And I'm really glad that you were free enough to be able to uh, be with us today. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it.